Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Motor Gang here, and today I'm going to be breaking down how to build a high quality drive base and all of my tips and tricks that I use to make a good drive base. And in addition to showing you these tricks, I'm also going to explain the why behind them. That way you understand the logic and that'll also help you out in your interviews for judged awards because I think the drive base is the most important part of the robot, so it's important to know how to build a good one. If any other mechanism on your robot breaks, but you still have a working drive, you can at least go around and play defense on the other team. But if your drive brace breaks, you're dead in the water and you can't do anything. All right, so let's get into it. Make sure you like and leave a comment to boost the YouTube algorithm and subscribe so that you don't miss future content because I am gonna have a video covering next week's game manual update. So make sure you don't miss that. All right, so starting off, I think the most important part of a drive base is making sure that you have enough power. Um, if your drive base is weak, then even then you can't play defense. So I would highly recommend for newer teams going with a six motor drive. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six motor drives are kind of the standard now. So that's just what I would recommend. If you are feeling more advanced, you can definitely move on to like seven motor or eight motor drives um, and used to be viable to run a four motor drive, but that hasn't really been the case since change up. So I would highly recommend teams run a six motor drive. Just make sure you have six motors on your drive base. It's gonna give you the extra power you need and speed you need in order to keep up with the rest of the other players. And on the same note, it's important to make sure you have a good speed torque balance on your drive base. This is 360 RPM, which is a 36 tooth gear to a 60 tooth gear using a 600 RPM motor driving it, which is the blue motor cartridges. And this is a really good solid ratio. It's a little bit more on the torque side rather than the speed side, but it's definitely still viable. And even if your drive base is built great, if you don't have a good speed, you're gonna struggle. If you're too slow, obviously you're just gonna be too slow getting around the field and other teams are gonna score ob game objects faster than you. And if you don't have enough torque and you're too fast, then you're gonna burn out your drive motors and then you're gonna run out of torque mid-match and you're gonna get pushed around and also just have really slow acceleration. So I'm gonna put a little link in the top right corner of this video right now to my tier list that I made about a year ago covering all different sorts of drive-based RPMs and types. So if you're not familiar with them, I'd highly recommend you go and watch that now. All right, the next thing with drive bases is cross braces. This is your main structure because with a regular tank drive, you wanna make sure that everything is a 90 degree angle. It's rigid, it's not gonna have extra friction and your drive base isn't gonna wobble around. Like you can see moving here, everything is pretty rigid like squeezing, nothing's really moving around. So I would say this drive is a little bit overbuilt, meaning that it has a bit too much structure, um, which too much structure can be a bad thing. It's extra weight, which is gonna slow you down slightly, but it's better to be overbuilt than underbuilt. So main thing here is, oops, uh, structure, um, it didn't break. So, <laughs> all right, let's not tip the drive base over again. So over here, you have a full length cross brace, um, which is just a cross brace running from one side of the drive base to the other. You don't need these, but I would highly recommend them as they're just a good general thing to have. So this cross brace just runs across the entire drive, keeps things mostly rigid, and that's mounted off of spacers. I believe those are 3 8 inch spacers right there. Um, and the reason for that is you can kind of see in there that 36 tooth gear, it would hit those if those spacers were any lower. So. And that's obviously going to be the most optimal spot because you're going to have the wheel further up and usually you want don't want it at the front or back of your robot because you're going to want things there like an intake or in this year's game a mogo clamp so then at the front on and the back on each of the pontoons i have another cross brace right there and that's just to stop the front from being able to be squished in um this is probably the most overbuilt part you really don't need a full c channel right there but just having it there and it's mounted on spacers for the same reason so it doesn't hit the wheel but yeah that's an important part and then here this is another cross brace here at the back um, running across just in the inside portion and the reason that this is just on the inside is so that it can be mounted directly to the c channel without the need for additional spacers moving it off and the advantage of that is that allows me to use shoulder screws which are going to help keep the drive stationary um, here's a shoulder screw right there. If you're not familiar with what these are, I'll put another link in the top right corner to my top 10 third party VEX parts that um, shoulder screws essentially just help keep your structure at 90 degree angles, which is really gonna help keep this drive base rigid if it's being attacked and rammed by other robots. Now those are, in my opinion, the most critical things. Um, you could build a drive base with just these things. And it would be jank, it would be scuffed, but it would still be fine.
But then another thing that you really want to have, this is really going to help lower your friction a ton already, is bearings. So motors have to be driven by shafts. You can't see them because they're covered in spacers. I'll kind of get to that in a little bit. But bearings are very important. They help reduce the friction on the shaft. You do not want your shaft just running on the metal. That's going to add a ton of extra friction. And additionally, some things that a lot of teams do is additionally on the outside, they'll have a bearing, but then they'll also have a bearing right up against the motor. You don't actually need that. You want your shaft to have two points of contact and one point is inside the motor and the other point is that bearing right there. If you, if you have three points of contact just due to tolerances, they're never ever going to be perfectly in a straight line. So that's gonna add extra friction because shafts are pretty much a perfect straight line. And if you have any misalignment in your bearings at all, it's gonna add a ton of extra friction because your shaft essentially needs to bend around the bearings. So you don't need your bearing there as long as your motor's properly aligned. The shaft, let's see if I can get the camera in there to show that off. The shaft essentially isn't going to ever touch that metal and it's just gonna like slide perfectly in there. So you don't actually need the bearing. That's just gonna add extra friction that you don't need. So yeah, shaft is not hitting the metal in there. Additionally for bearings, I would recommend using the version two bearings, which are these ones right here. Side by side, on the right-hand side is a version two bearing, and on the left-hand side is a version one. Um, they do the same thing, version ones definitely work, but version two bearings only are going to require one screw and nut, whereas these ones will require two. And version two bearings also have this square peg, um, which is going to help making alignment even easier. Um, as you can see, just pushing that in, it'll just pop right in, not really any wiggle room, whereas this bearing, it doesn't ever pop in, so you're more likely to get it misaligned. One more additional point of failure. And just by having one screw, it's gonna be slightly lighter. And on the note of weight savings, I use nylon screws and nuts for my bearings. That's the only time that I use them on my robot, just for that additional weight savings. I've never had issues with them coming loose. And if you're not familiar with where to buy these, again, I'll have a link in the top 10 third-party legal VEX parts up in the top right corner there. Another thing that will help dramatically reduce friction is using screw joints on your wheels. As you can see, that wheel is mounted on, not on a shaft, but on a screw. And you can see on the outside there, those are 2.25 inch shoulder screws. So I don't use bearings there just because the shoulder screws have enough of a small shoulder, which is gonna keep them aligned with the C channel. I've never had issues with them. This drive base runs about 0.1 watts of friction on the motors. So that's about as low as you can get. And if you're not familiar with how to build a screw joint, I will have a video in the top right corner going over and detailing how I build my screw joints. It's a short little tutorial, quite popular. Another thing that will dramatically help your structural increase is boxing. Boxing is a technique that involves the inside of C-channels. So the inside gap of a C-channel is 7 eighths of an inch. Um, that distance to that distance, 7 eighths of an inch which if you don't box, your sheet channels will bend in like that. You can see that is not a 90 degree angle. So I box the outside corners of my drive base like this. I'm um, just adding the spacers. You can see it's all on the outside corners. And that means that if it gets rammed, the sea channel isn't gonna get bent in. Cause if the sea channel gets bent in, then you're gonna add additional friction to the drive base. So I box the corners of my drives and that helps. So in order to do that, I just get a half inch spacer and a 3 8 inch spacer, you kind of just push it into the C-channel and then screw it on it. Um, sometimes if your C-channel is already bent, it can be a little tricky to get the spacing correctly and you kind of have to force it in, but it is supposed to fit if you grab like a stock VEX C-channel, it'll just slide right in. So right here you can see the 3 8 inch spacer and the half inch spacer. I just kind of squeeze them together like that, grab it, hold the C-channel from behind, and then just slide them in. And then move them up and down as needed. So that's just how you box, pretty basic once you get the technique down and definitely useful to increase structural integrity. And also something I include on the next point, which is stacking. If you're only running a three wheel drive, which I'll get to in a bit later, and you want six motors on your drive base, well, you're gonna need to add an extra gear. So the most common technique is stacking your motors, which is done by this, by having an extra C channel that extends up off the drive base. Um, for 36 tooth gears, that is mounted up on half inch standoffs right in there. And typically you wouldn't need that extra space at the back, but that was just there as a mounting point for this robot um, back when it was built. So typically you could just get away with using a four long C channel, 
So as you can see, those are boxed there to stop them from bending out, half inch standoffs. And that is also boxed from the bottom. You can kind of see in there, the spacers in that gap in there. Same thing on the other side, boxed. And you can see the pink screw running through there, which is typically the spacing side that you want to use for boxing. And then I only typically box one side because that's, I found that to be enough. And then it's pretty simple. So just half inch standoffs going up, make sure those are secured tightly. And then you just add an extra motor up on top. Another important thing on the drive base is your wheel hole gap. So the best spacing that you can get is a three hole gap, which is because that is one, two, three holes or 1.5 inches. It's much, much easier to do a four hole gap or a two inch gap. That's what most teams are gonna use, but three hole gap is possible. And if you're willing to put the time and effort into it, I would highly recommend doing it as it's going to make half an inch thinner on that side, half an inch thinner on that side. Your entire robot's gonna be one inch thinner, which is gonna just make it a smaller profile, help you fit in size if you're very wide. And it's also just going to help save weight because you're gonna not have to extend your C channels out by an extra half inch on each side. So three hole gap is finicky and there's a couple little quirks for each different RPM. For 360 RPM, what I have done here is coming out, that is just a pretty standard stuff. You have a washer in there for spacing, gear, shaft collar, and then spacers. That was spacing was done in CAD model to be pretty precise. Um, and the shaft collar to stop the shaft from wobbling out, only need one shaft collar on that because since it's spaced properly, that's not going anywhere. No, you don't. That is a 60 tooth gear, low strength. And those originally have square holes. We drilled those out with a drill so that it could be screw jointed onto the wheel. And I'll kind of pop up some pictures from building that. But essentially the clearances are always very tight on three hole gaps. So I would highly recommend cutting it out in advance because not a lot of room there. And on the traction wheel, just because the spacing was slightly different, um, we used a high strength because we didn't want to drill in another gear. So and actually in order to make it fit, we had to file down the screw heads um, because just on the spacing of 360 RPM, those pink screws and the red screws were hitting previously. So by filing down the screw heads, that is no longer an issue. So spacing can be quite tight. I know of teams who on the other side of things, like you can see those screw heads sticking out there are almost hitting. So I know teams who have like cut down their screws to be a very specific length. Um, and like for 48 tooth gears, if you're doing 450 RPM, you have to like bevel down the gears. I'll put a picture of that up on the screen. So it's quite a lot of additional work um, for most drive base RPMs, but I would definitely recommend it as it's going to help you save space and there's no additional downside once you've put the initial work in. Finally, just the last couple of general tips, use nylock nuts on your drive base. Um, they're gonna, not going to come loose as caps nuts. The only time, or I don't, is like when it's in a spot that you're not going to be able to tighten with a nylock nut. Like you can see a caps nut in there because the bearing is already screwed in there. So you're not going to be able to get a screwdriver in and tighten that unless you put the bearing on after. But then you have to reach the bearing in there and it can get really awkward. So it's fine to have a couple caps nuts on, but I would highly recommend using nylocks every single time that you can. And um, bearings being another exception, I just use nylon nuts there in order to save weight. And the final tip that I would recommend is make sure your drive base is a good size. This was built for a 15 inch robot. So that's kind of why it's on the shorter side. Typically you're going to want a longer drive base than this. Um, most teams will actually have four wheels going out, another one out there with the 18 inch robot, you have some extra space. And then the way that that'll be done is you'll just have an extra 36 tooth gear right there. And then an extra 60 tooth gear right there. Move your longer C channels, move your brace forward. This is only a 25 hole long drive base. You can definitely run a smaller drive for VRC. I believe 36905X um, typically likes to run 25 by 25. And then of course, if you have an extra gear out there, you can move the motor forward. Although you might still want it stacked to give you additional space for an intake. If you are running a drive base with four inch wheels, you might want to get away with still only running three wheels total just because those are going to be bigger. So it's still going to expand out and you're not going to have room for that fourth wheel. And then with 2.75 inch wheels, almost always you're going to want to have four wheels on each side. Um, and then typically just um, this one, robot wanted to have enough room to put a mobile goal in the middle. So that's kind of why it's a little bit on the wider side, but typically make your drive base as skinny as you can and as short as you can just to save weight. But it, that's not a huge deal. Um, especially for this year's game. Other games like Over Under 
or spin up where you have a narrow channel that you have to fit through, it's even better to have a skinnier drive base. But that kind of covers all the basics for building a good quality drive base. I'm sure I missed some things and this isn't going to be a perfect guide, but this is just kind of my tips and tricks and what I personally would recommend teams do. If you have any questions, please comment them down below and I will see you in the next video. Best of luck.